In today's video, I will show you a simple way to automate image generation with Stable Diffusion and ChatGPT, like we can see here. We just have to add our prompts, negative prompts and how many images we want. The rest will be on autopilot. This will also be available for you to download if you want to try it out. But now let's just get going. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. Uh, you can see here are all the libraries we need for this. You can see here import all of that and we have our two first functions. It's just a basic open file and read content and write content to a file function. So we have open and save file. Uh, here we read API keys from our text files. I like to store my API keys in a text file. But before I show you how to find your API keys, this is a perfect segue to today's sponsor, Brilliant. What I love about Brilliant is that it's not just about teaching you, it's about equipping you with the tools you need to develop deep and truly master new skills. And trust me, Brilliant isn't just throwing a bunch of complex theories at you. Their approach to learning, it's very hands-on, it's interactive, they offer thousands of lessons from foundational math to data science. And my personal favorite is of course the Python programming and oh the AI course that's well simply brilliant i mean isn't it cool to explore ai neural networks and more to easy to grasp bite-sized lesson that can fit right into your schedule this is learning at your own pace but with a clear and effective structure and you might be wondering okay but uh, what's in it for me well i got some great news right now if you visit brilliant.org slash all about ai you can try everything brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days even better the first 200 of you get 20 percent of brilliant's annual premium subscription click the link in the description to take advantage of this amazing offer and a big thanks to brilliant for sponsoring this video this is just straightforward api key for open ai and api key for stable diffusion uh, I will show you where you can find those API keys. So you can just go to platform.openai.com and go to your account here. So you just click here on personal, go down to view API keys. Here you can see your API key come up here. If you need a new one, just create a new secret key and you can use that. On the Stable Diffusion API, I go to beta.dreamstudio.ai. I log into my account. I just click here on my profile. And under here you can find your API key. And that is basically all you need. If you then go to the code, you can just paste those keys into sdapikey.txt, openaikey2.txt, and you should be ready to go. And next we have a chat GPT function. Next up we have our chat GPT function. And this is of course an important one because we need this to create some text. I'm not gonna go through this into very specific detail, but I'm gonna highlight a few points. You can see we are on the model 3.5 turbo. This is up to you. You can pick GPT-4 here. You can even pick DaVinci 003 if you want to do that. You can adjust the temperature of the model here. By sliding this higher, you get a more crea creative response. I like to put it at the 0 0.8. If you look a bit further down here, we see we have a system message to the conversation that we are storing in something called chatbot. And we're gonna look at that later. But uh, then we can just move on here. So. Next up, we have a function called generate image. This function calls the stability AI API to generate the image from a text prompt. So here you can see there are a bit more stuff. So you can see we have to set the parameter for our height and width for our model. CFG scale, we have clip guidance, we have steps and samples. I always set samples to one because we're gonna run this in a loop. If you want a higher quality, you can like up the steps and you can up the scale. I think this is how much it's gonna follow the prompt. And you can see here is the model we are using. We are using the SDXL version 222. You can set this to Stable Diffusion 1.5 if you want that. And uh, a bit further down, the only thing I want to focus on here is our text prompt. I have chosen to, you can see here, negative prompts. I'm going to feed in both a text prompt and a negative prompt. I think this gives better results after what I have read about a stable diffusion. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. And basically it's, I'm not going to go into all these details, but we have save the image as a PNG file. And here you can set your folder. My folder now is just called SD images. That is quite good. And this will just return an image name. We also have this function that gives each image a different name. So it kind of stamps it with a date time. 
So every image get a specific file name. And here is basically our loop. I have put down here n is how many images we are gonna we care gonna create. We are gonna create. So I put this to file now, but here we can adjust whatever you want. You want 100 images? Just 200. Right, and here is our system message for ChatGPT. Uh, if you not don't have heard about this, uh, I have a video on my channel. You, if you want to learn more about system prompts, but basically what I have set this prompt to is: you are a photographer and a art expert. Your task is to assist the user creating amazing prompts for all kinds of images. So that is my system prompt for the chatbot. Then we just go on to read prompts from the text files we are going to create. So we have text prompt, uh, the one text prompt, and we have our negative prompts. And we're going to use the generate image function, of course, to create images. That we will feed our API key, our text prompt, and our negative prompts. And that is basically it. Uh, just 120 lines, so it's not very advanced. Uh, I want to go into our text files. So if you remember here now, you see I opened these files called prompts and negative prompts. And here I have done some just some simple prompt engineering to get our results. So let's start by looking at prompts.txt. Here is my prompt. I just here are examples of amazing text prompts. I just found these prompts online. So number one is text prompt. I found some images I really enjoyed that was created by Stable Diffusion and I just copied those prompts. I did that three times to give the ChatGPT some examples to follow along and know what kind of structure you want. So you can put in whatever prompts you want here. If you want to copy those, I'm going to leave them in. So these are three, remember these are the text prompts. This has nothing to do with the negative prompts. We're going to look at that. And I just follow up with create a new random text prompt in inspired two times inspired but not copied from the prompts above okay that's good that is basically the prompt i use for this and we have the negative prompts it's exactly the same but of course this is going to be negative prompts instead negative prompts if you don't know what that is that is basically things we don't want in our image so we don't want it to be an illustration 3d uh, we don't want bad anatomy and Anatomy, we don't want bad hands, we don't want watermarks, logos, blurry. So you can see, you can put in whatever thing you don't want here. And we follow up with create a new random negative prompts inspired but not copied by the negative prompts above. And now we are basically ready to run this. So before I show you the UI, let's just do that. I'm just gonna run the code in the terminal now. I think it's a bit easier to see than run it in VS Studio. So basically just gonna run python sdspeed.py and I've opened this folder here because this is our folder where our images get saved. So when this has run, uh, we can see the images pop up here. So let's just this uh, run a bit and we take a look at the results. Okay, so that was finished. Uh, let's take a look at the images here. So I'm just gonna blow this up. Okay, we got some kind of girl here. Uh, these were not amazing, but uh, it's not half bad. Uh, but I wanted to see what kind of prompts we got back here. So let's do, take a look at the, the last image we have here. This one. So you can see the prompt was surrealistic, dreamy, eternal, ethereal. I don't know what that is. And you can see this is like the text prompt. And this was the negative prompt, right? Pixelated, grainy, distorted. You get all kinds of different things here. That is basically how this works. Uh, but I have done something else I wanted to show you. If you go back to the code now, I'm not gonna go through this in detail, but I have created a new UI. So this is the script I will be uploading, so you can actually use the UI. Uh, you have to install some Tinkter and some other pillow and stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna make a requirements.txt if you wanna install those libraries. This is just a simple UI that brings up every image. I'm gonna show you how this works now and let's run this UI. And here you can see it. So this is just a simple UI coming up. So every time uh, it creates a new image, that image will pop up on the screen. So for every new image that is stored in our folder, this will just pop that up here. So you can think of this like a never-ending photo frame, right? 
with a new image every time if you wanted to create something like that just saw that here comes a new image so this just keeps creating as many images as you want Okay, that is basically what I wanted to show you. Find the link in the description below to my website where I will leave a link where you can download this code if you want to try it out yourself. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take a look at some of the videos you can see on the screen here. Have a good day and I'll see you again soon.